this month in North America. We'll be able to play on March 22nd, and if you're in the EU, you'll be able to play on the 25th. The game was actually already released in Japan in May of 2021, which is pretty standard. So you might have already seen some gameplay and coverage for Rune Factory 5, but what you might not know is that the Japanese version of Rune Factory 5 specifically did not allow slash have same-sex marriage as of last year. However, the English, French, and German versions coming out very soon will include same-sex marriage. This has been confirmed by Exceed Games, who is publishing the game here in the West, and their team stated late last year that Rune Factory 5 will be the first game in the series to include same-sex marriage. This feature was not present in the Japanese release of the game back in May of 2021. September 2021 is when we were first promised same-sex marriage in the game come international release, and in November, Japanese audiences finally got the patch for it. Western audiences will have same-sex marriage upon release next week. This is super exciting for me and I'm sure you're super excited about this too. If you've seen any promo for Rune Factory 5 recently, there's been a lot of push about the bachelors and bachelorettes. They look absolutely gorgeous. From the sweet ray of sunshine that is Priscilla, to a succubus who lives for love, Ludmilla, and our were animal slash cat girl of the moment, Fuka, down to the well-versed Lucas, and the male counterpart to the were animal Murakumo. It's hard to ignore these wonderful character profiles as if you would want to, especially when the Rune Factory 5 website itself has a perfect matchmaker quiz that's been pushed on social too. Now, even though I know that you love dating and farming sims if you're watching this video, there is of course way more to Rune Factory 5 to look forward to, with a plot occurring in the sleepy border town of Rigbarth. Mysterious events are unfolding, affecting the runes that govern the balance between humanity and nature. You are the newest ranger for the peacekeeping organization Seed, and you'll have to protect the frontier town by routing up rowdy monsters with your official Seed-issued spell seal. When not on a mission, work with the people of Rigbarth to help the town flourish through farming, festivals, and friendships. Down the line, you'll be able to embark on adventures with townspeople, and you'll have to embrace your inner power to halt the descent into chaos. Now, Rune Factory 5 is obviously not the first of its kind. The first Rune Factory game, A Fantasy Harvest Moon, came out in 2006 in Japan, and was developed by Neverland Co. as a spin-off to the Harvest Moon video game series. Yoshifumi Hashimoto, producer of the Harvest Moon series, described Rune Factory as Harvest Moon where you wield a sword. There have been seven Rune Factory games before Rune Factory 5. Of course, there's one, two, three, four, but there's also Rune Factory Frontier, Tides of Destiny, and Rune Factory 4 Special. Personally, I've always been a huge Harvest Moon fan. My first game was Sunshine Islands on the DS, and then I kind of went back and played older Harvest Moons too. But when it comes to Rune Factory, the only game I've actually played in the series is Rune Factory Frontier, which was on the Nintendo Wii. If you've played Rune Factory Frontier, particularly if you've completed it, you might know that there's actually like a pretty large expansive plot. A few spoilers are ahead, but Rune Factory Frontier focuses on Raguna, who is actually the protagonist in A Fantasy Harvest Moon, the first Rune Factory game too. And basically he's saved by a girl named Mist, and then things kind of go haywire, lots of monsters, and then you meet two twins and they're really magical. I don't really get the whole plot because the point is, at the time I was a young un playing the Wii and I was not coordinated enough to actually get through the dungeon. So no, I never finished the game myself. I farmed a lot and I had a lot of fun, but I didn't really get to enjoy the story of Rune Factory Frontier because I physically wasn't speaking the language of video games yet. My, my hands were not coordinated and all I did was farm all day. It was still a great game for me, don't get me wrong, as I ran around and tried to date Rosetta, but Rune Factory has been a fan favorite for its combat as well as its relationship building and farming. Now that it's 2022 and I can use a controller more effectively and let's be real, it's not gonna be on the Wii, I'm really excited to see how Rune Factory plays on the Switch. This will be the second Rune Factory game on the Switch after Rune Factory 4 Special. In Rune Factory 5, you'll be able to play as a male or female protagonist, with default names Ares and Alice. Now, when it comes to gender and character choices in games, I do tend to prefer games that either force you to play a specific character that has been written ahead of time, or let you be fully in control of your character, whether that's having a gender or not having gender at all, choosing your pronouns and choosing how you look. However, it is really interesting to note that the Rune Factory series kind of started out with a specific main character in mind. The first game, Rune Factory of Fantasy Harvest Moon, featured Raguna, who has lost its memory and is saved by a girl named Mist. In Rune Factory 2, you play as a protagonist named Kyle, but spoiler alert, you eventually play as Kyle's child, who can be female or male. In Rune Factory Frontier, you play as Raguna once more. In Rune Factory 3, you play as a boy named Micah. 
And in Rune Factory, Ties of Destiny, you actually control two characters, the male protagonist Aiden and the female protagonist Sanja. Rune Factory 4 is actually the first game in which you choose between playing a male or female protagonist whose default names are Lest and Frey. I read a really interesting article called How Rune Factory 4 Got Gendered Avatars Right by Asa Reyes. Asa is a gender fluid female identifying player, and Asa's article is a really great read on how gender choices affect gameplay. In particular, Asa gives props to Rune Factory 4 and how the NPCs don't treat the player character too differently depending on if you picked male or a female character. I found it really interesting that Asa compared this to Stardew Valley because obviously I love Stardew Valley but I have no shame in pointing out the flaws to it either. In particular Asa points out how Alex is literally sexist saying that he would ask you to play ball if you weren't a girl and also pointed out something I had actually never noticed before and how Elliot will order you a glass of wine if you play as a female character but will offer to buy you a beer if you're a male character. These kind of things are not very game breaking, but they don't really offer too much to the gameplay or the story, so they kind of just make me uncomfortable. And I love how Asa points it out very eloquently. Perhaps that was a really long tangent, but all that is to say, I'm actually really excited to see what Rune Factory does in terms of treating the player, no matter the gender that we choose at the beginning. I do of course wish we had more options between just male and female, but given that the game came from a specific character that we all played at once and is now here, along with Xseed's very vocal stance on having same-sex marriage in the game, I'm more excited than not on this one. As someone who only played Rune Factory Frontier and not at all correctly, I'm also really interested to see how the lore plays out for someone like me is not too knowledgeable on the lore thus far. In Rune Factory 5, we will be part of the peacekeeping organization known as Seed. A long time ago, the old empire fell, and a tense situation arose between two countries and their borders. There was a period of anarchy, and regions located far from the eyes of their respective governments were hit particularly hard, creating their own self-defense forces in response. There were border disputes, and more conflict arose, until one determined man managed to unite the self-defense forces into a single organization that grew into Seed. Today, the organization lends its support to other countries and preserves the peace along the borders of Norad and the Old Empire. Rune Factory 5 is promising to bring us fast-paced action RPG combat, and I was actually kind of surprised that the trailer for the NA release featured so much combat for like literally the first half of the trailer. In my head, I always saw Rune Factory as farming first because, you know, that, that's how I played it on the Wii, but it honestly looks like a very fleshed out JRPG on its own. Of course, fantasy farming is still a thing, but unlike other farming games, you can actually actually tame monsters to help you on your farm. The Rune Factory 5 site says that the farmhands will help you grow a wide variety of crops on the backs of dragons. And I honestly just don't have the information to know if like literally there are going to be dragons or if there's literally going to be crops on the dragon's backs, but I don't care. If there's a dragon involved in some sort of way, I am there. Of course, we touched on the dating and marriage aspects of the game as well. You can even start a family. But what I didn't realize was in the game as well is this wide variety of seasonal festivals. You'll be able to compete in cooking, crafting, and fishing contests, and you can invite your sweetheart to join you for stargazing too. As someone who plays a heck ton of farming simulators, I am perfectly happy with the game loop of farming, mining, fishing, dating, and festivals, so adding in this whole actual like JRPG string alongside monsters helping me farm and new sorts of festivals, I, I feel like I'm going to be very spoiled here. All in all, I'm really excited for the western release of Rune Factory 5. It has a lot of pros going for it, from the expansive gameplay to the literal same-sex marriage promo right there in the trailer. Cons for the game so far is that it is at a higher price point with a pre-order at $60 and the character roster is really not diverse in terms of looks at all. But all in all, I'm really excited to see how this game plays, even if I have seen some gameplay from people over in Asia already. So what do you think of Rune Factory 5? Have you already been watching content you can't wait to play? Or are you going to wait and see how the reviews go in the West? I'm going to leave you with my favorite tweet of the day from Dakuma Art that says, Rune Factory 5 is coming out on March and you can be gay. Holy shit. Because same. Same. And I'll see you next time for more Rune Factory and farming game videos soon. Bye!